What's up, guys? Um, today we're going to talk about uh, old school training. So I want to say a few words about um, training in the old days and uh, why is training so different than than uh, now. Obviously, the main reason why I decided to talk about this um, uh, serial uh, old school bodybuilding is uh, in the first place is the look because the look of the bodybuilders in 70s and 80s is obviously very different than the look of the bodybuilders today and for more people actually more and more people that look in the 70s and 80s old school um, bodybuilding look is uh, much more preferential that uh, look of uh, modern professional bodybuilders um, all we need to Remember is for example that uh, the ultimate uh, goal in the in the old days in the old school was to keep the, the waist as small as possible and then keep uh, build chest shoulders back legs as much as possible and um, the guys then have achieved it and they created some uh, amazing physique physics which I mean I don't want to call them classic because with today's classic this is not the same those guys then are not really classic bodybuilders as the guys today because the guys in the past are much bigger and they look better than today's classic bodybuilders but they also look better for me uh, than the, today's uh, <clears throat> elite professional elite now today I want to focus on training so why was training so different uh, what what made that training different I believe there are a few major reasons for that particular type of training that people used in 70s and 80s. First of all, <clears throat> that is the lack of modern equipment. So people then used mainly basic stuff. The machines were probably only like uh, a lot pull down, maybe leg press, maybe uh, 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 leg curls and stuff like that, uh, comparing to countless number of, of very sophisticated and very effective equipment that we have nowadays. So lack of uh, modern equipment was the number one reason. The number two reason I see is uh, uh, lack of knowledge in biomechanics. Uh, this is not only in those days, all the people know a little bit more about biomechanics today, which means they know how to exercise with more, uh, more efficiency, how to increase the benefit and uh, decrease the risk at the same time. Uh, people in the past didn't know that that they train with the with the, in a very with very bad form mainly cheating uh, some kind of force reps uh, also movements like uh, squats for example were more often performed wrong than right and you will see some pictures so I'll highlight that so lack of knowledge of biomechanics is the second reason of of training in the in the old days uh, type and amount of steroids as well people have taken different type of steroids and different amounts so that they had to rely more on training this is why they actually train more not because they knew that they need to train more often because of some physiological discoveries in, in sports science in those days which didn't exist basically but simply because they tried and uh, they they achieve results by by training more often then diet also. Diet was a very powerful factor which determined what type of training people will do. Um, <clears throat> if, um, if you compare with the modern bodybuilding type of training, the old school training was more frequent. People trained every single muscle at least twice a week before the show. That would be three times a week. So, so some good like 12 weeks before the show, people will start training, especially Arnold. Who was like uh, like a god in those days? He was my idol at the same time, uh, and uh, he he has achieved tremendous results without any doubt. But not based on knowledge, which we can see later on. Why is that? But mainly because of his intuition, his instinctive approach to training, then to his uncomparable genetics. When I say genetics, I don't only mean muscular development potential but I also think genetic in uh, skeletal proportions uh, genetics are also uh, very transparent in his um, ability to focus is his mental drive and also will to power so Arnold would achieve 
anything he wanted, regardless of what it takes. And also, uh, <clears throat> people, the difference was the people train more frequently, but they train with more sets. They use more sets per, per muscle group. Uh, probably, it was very few bodybuilders who used less than 20 sets per muscle group. Most likely, it'll be 25, 30, sometimes even 40, like Nubre, like other people who train with high high number of sets. They also use higher number of reps than today. And uh, the difference in training was also that they they were the training then was actually every training session was less efficient. And this because of that less efficiency, because lack of knowledge in biomechanics, they need to train with more sets and they need to train more often in order to recruit the, the uh, maximum uh, uh, available muscle fibers to cause the growth. So if you can recruit all your muscle fibers, let's say in 10 sets, there is no need to do 12 or 15 or 25. But they didn't know that because the equipment was very <clears throat> basic, number one. Number two, people uh, didn't train the right form and without form, there is no intensity. So don't don't mix that heavy weights with intensity. Often people say, oh, he's training uh, old style bodybuilding. He's using a lot of weights. Yes, he's using lots of weights because he doesn't know how to use less weights and achieve higher results with much <clears throat> lower risk of injury. Now we know very well that when people started using heavy weights from 90s onwards, we have much more terrific injuries like uh, ruptures of different muscles, usually biceps, chest. It could have been triceps, it could have been uh, uh, hamstrings or quadriceps or any, any, any muscle because people use weights which were too heavy and simply muscle was growing faster than connective tissue could have adapted to that particular weight. And this is why we have all these kind of ruptures plus different different steroids and hormones which actually weaken connective tissues but <clears throat> uh, let's go back to the number one uh, lack of modern equipment people didn't have modern equipment today you have machines which are extremely efficient they're biomechanically ergonomically they're perfect they can they can stimulate all your muscle fibers and uh, in, in in two or three sets per exercise you've probably done everything you can do so you don't need to do a countless number of sets also, we know much more about biomechanics, which, which reduces the number of exercises per muscle group, as believed in the past. So basically, with this lack of equipment, people had to do everything they could have possibly done. This is why Arnold, for example, used to do barbell curls, then used to do dumbbell curls, they used to do concentration curl, they used to do squat biceps curl, etc., etc., which is absolutely unnecessary because every single exercise is the same you could have only done one exercise which is biomechanically perfect which means that biceps moves the forearm up and down and also supinates at the top and uh, that's the end of story so you just do enough, enough sets for that particular muscle to exhaust all possible muscle fibers and the job is done so you don't need to do the same movement standing seating uh, on incline bench with barbells with dumbbells because it's, it's absolutely nonsense but they had to do it because none of those exercises in the way that they've done it would be efficient enough so it will only, only trigger x amount of muscle fibers necessary for maximum growth this is why they had to repeat it again and again and again with a different very very similar not necessarily identical but almost identical exercises in order to exhaust the remaining uh, <clears throat> uh, muscle fibers which were not used uh, lack of knowledge of biomechanics yes that's that's the massive thing i mean if, if you just look at the videos and the photos of, of most famous bodybuilders you can see that the exercises they are doing in they're, they're, they're done in in very bad form yes it's in very bad form why did they do that well because they they didn't know better even my idol arnold who was I, I still believe his, for example, double biceps is untouchable. Nobody came even close to, to that pose. Arnold did so many exercises wrongly. Yes, I can say that. You know, I'm not fanatical religious who believes in whatever. This is my idol. do everything he's done was right. No, what he's done is done. What's right is right, but what's not right is not right. 
So I have right to criticize because I've been in the game for uh, 40 years now plus, and I can tell you that loads of facts. For example, Arnold uh, doing bicep curl. You can see that you can see on the photo that Arnold is doing that movement, and the biceps is absolutely not biomechanical position. This is shoulders are supporting the weight there, and he's leaning back. So is is lower back that has done more action on shoulders than biceps. But anyhow, then for example, squatting. Not only Arnold, but it is like an army of bodybuilders who did it wrong because they did no better. Squats, for example, they are not exercise that, that, that triggers exclusively quadriceps. This is very complex exercise. It mainly triggers gluteus muscles, lower back, and also quads. But probably 35 lower back, 35 gluteus, maybe 30% quads, depending on your on your skeletal proportion. So basically, even that. <clears throat> that exercise, if you look at the photo, not only Arnold, Arnold, for example, leaning forward, using a lot of the back more than anything else, not going deep enough, you can see that the tibia is not moving backwards as much as possible, meaning that that, that exercise is done mainly by the joint, which is hip joint, not the knee joint, hip joint, you have Bluetooth muscle dominating the lower back, helping, etc., etc. Not only Arnold, look at the picture, for example, this one. Um, you can see Lee Haney doing the same thing. I mean, everything is off there. The alignment is completely wrong. He's leaning too much forward. So people used to do those things just because everybody else was doing it. They didn't know much about it. Later bodybuilders have learned that you don't even have to do squats. Many of top bodybuilders don't even do squats or do, or do uh, the performing on different machines in which, for example, the back stays straight. So when you go up and down, you're not using your lower back. Yes, you're using your Bluetooth muscles and quads. Nothing wrong with that. Gluteus muscle has to be exercised as well. But as, you, as, as modern equipment will allow you, you can do that without using free weights, which will have tendency to push you forward. So uh, not only that, for example, movements which I, I never advise any, any of my clients, or I write about it uh, uh, exclusively, for example, uh, press be, shoulder press behind the neck. I mean, this is a suicidal exercise. If you know anything about the shoulder joint, if you know anything about the positioning, uh, something called a chromium bone, which is actually limiting the movement of your humerus on the way up, you would never do this exercise. It's a disaster exercise. It's, it's, it's begging for injuries. And countless number of people that I've seen even had uh, shoulder surgeries in order to repair the damage they've done. And I've seen them even after that, again in the gym, doing the same exercise. Because this is the worst positioning of your shoulder joint and the, the, the trajectory of your humerus on that, in that, in that uh, process is, is completely wrong. And uh, if you are lucky, it will cause only impingement, which is press, pressing on your bursa, causing the swelling and pain in the shoulder, which will eventually go. But if, if you're not lucky, you will be damaging your ligaments. And in that case, surgery will be required. And that's a very complicated thing. So, but as you can see on this photo, Arnold, and not only Arnold, many, many others exclusively, uh, almost everybody was doing shoulder behind the neck. I don't know what were they, what were they trying to achieve with that, but it's a very limiting movement, even it doesn't, doesn't stimulate the, the, the proper biomechanical function of the front shoulder. And, but it's still done religiously, right, like squats like cheating bicep curls, like cheating bent over rowing. Bent over rowing nowadays, even then in the gyms, you could have seen people doing it like, it looks more like shrugs than bent over rowing. It's not to do with the back muscles, with trapezius muscles, which is the target area of bent over rowing, but it's more, more to do with, with, with your upper trapezius because the people are doing it almost straight, just in order to lift more weights. Anyhow, <clears throat> Type and amount of steroids. People use less steroids, therefore they felt in, intuitively, instinctively, they need to train harder, they need to train more often as well. So if muscle was trained once a week, they didn't have good results. But if they hit muscle twice a week, they would have much more results. Now, uh, modern bodybuilding is known to be, um, as such as training, for example, is only once a week. Every muscle is trained once a week. Lee Henny spoke about it in a few videos saying, I can't believe today people are having like a shoulder day, arms day. This, he says it's ridiculous. I mean, he always used to put a couple of muscles together in order to train every muscle twice a week. 
Now things are different because muscle is not going to start shrinking within 48, 72 hours because of the amount of steroids and type of steroids people are taking. You can train that muscle once a week, maybe even once in 10 or 15 days and things will never, nothing will be wrong because because the power of those those extremely powerful um, substances is as such as will keep that muscle big, even make Keep, keep the muscle growing, regardless of how often you, you, you train the muscle. We know that the muscle starts shrinking 48 to 72 hours after. So even if you are training that muscle twice in every eight days or nine days, you will be closer to something which uh, our knowledge in physiology will, will justify, because then before the muscle starts shrinking, you will, will stimulate growth again. But when you change your bio, uh, bio, biochemistry, when you start using so many and so powerful ingredients, chemicals, that doesn't apply anymore. Diet also. Diet was, uh, that, that's the subject of another video, but diet was very different than diet now. So people, when people uh, the, diet, the diet was low carb, and predominantly they were, it, was, it was based on protein and fat. And as such, it dictated different type of training. People train before the show twice a week in order to get in shape. So, as I said, we have a few different factors, like lack, lack of motor equipment, lack of knowledge in biomechanics, then um, type and amount of steroids people take, and also the diet. And all these factors influenced, obviously, different type of training in the 70s and 80s than we uh, are seeing now, now, worshippers of uh, bodybuilding legends, which which are legends for me as well as, uh, for example, Arnold was my idol, right? And there is no question about it. It was he has managed to produce amazing physique. I believe nobody surpassed Arnold in many many poses. So, uh, but that doesn't mean that these guys uh, have trained properly. They were training with extremely high risk. I believe personally they were all extremely overtrained, even Arnold. And if he trained with more knowledge on, on biomechanics and on better equipment, Arnold would probably be even bigger with the same food and with the same type of steroids and amount he was taking. He was even he would be even bigger. But people would say, okay, if you say that Arnold didn't train properly, or maybe Lee Haney or similar other other guys, how did they manage? Well, how did they manage to achieve such results? I will repeat that again. Arnold was ex is, is a proper freak when it comes to bodybuilding, and his genetics were uh, without a comparison. He had genetics like not, not many other people. A lot of people tried to train the same as Arnold in his days, and they couldn't follow him because they simply didn't have that, not just physical abilities, not just, uh, as uh, we know now in physiology, uh, preferential type of muscle fibers which was dominating like type 2 or type 2a and b especially b but also arnold had a different uh, willpower focusing determination this these are all uh, genetic endowments that some people have more than others and they help you to really do things which are not even perfect and uh, achieve tremendous results so you cannot compare Arnold's workout. You can't say, oh, I'm going to train like Arnold. I'm going to be like Arnold. You're not going to be like Arnold. You can only be the best that you can be. And in order to do that with a minimum risk of injuries, you need to exercise in perfect form. You need to listen to your body. You need to understand physiology. You need to understand biochemistry. You need to understand biomechanics. I'm, I admit that biomechanics is still in its infancy, not because it doesn't exist, but because people don't want to learn. They don't want to read. They don't want to listen. If the video is longer than five minutes, most of the people won't even want to listen to this. But biomechanics are every, actually everything that you need to know in order to train with, with, with maximum efficiency. And that, will, that means at the same time that you will, try, have to, you, will, you will train less, less sets, right? And also you won't be as overtrained as, uh, as uh, will, uh, will definitely happen if you start following Arnold's training methods. Very, very few people benefited from that type of training. Even Lee Haney couldn't follow Arnold's method of training. He trained 
less. He trained in less sets. I mean, he didn't train every muscle twice a week. He trained every muscle twice in uh, eight days, and for example, and also before the show, he wouldn't change it. He would still train every muscle in, in eight days, uh, according to his training programs. But uh, Arnold, no, Arnold will train every muscle three times per week before the show. So um, I hope I, uh, try, I, I managed to explain why training in 70s and 80s was so different than training today. And uh, obviously that type of training contributed in a way, not, is not a major factor, but is one of the important factors, uh, contributed to that unique uh, look of bodybuilders in 70s and 80s. It was so, um, so unique that look, that if you cover the faces of top 10 Olympians, you will be able to recognize the bodies and you will know who is Arnold, who is uh, Frank Zen, who is Roy Callender, who is Mike Manser, etc., etc. You will know that, right? But the thing is, if you do the same thing today, you cover the faces, you will have a dif difficulty uh, recognizing who is who, because top 10 people at the stage look more or less the same. And the reason for that is because they're taking the same amount of steroids, they're training the same, and... Um, they're eating the same type of diet. So there is nothing like a genetic difference among them. They all turn, especially because of powerful steroids and other hormones, which I will be talking later on. Uh, yes, some people may say, okay, this, what you just said is okay, but not necessarily. There, there were people like, for example, Mike Menzer, who trained very differently. He trained each muscle once a week, or maybe even less, maybe once 10 days, he trained only a few sets, this and that. Well, Mike... Mike Manser made a good business out of his heavy-duty training system. We don't know how Mike Manser trained because nobody saw him training. He always trained behind the locked doors first thing in the morning with his brother Ray. We don't know what he's done. We know what he says he's done, but we don't know what he's done. Nobody saw him. Arnold was always training in public, so we know what Arnold did. Serge Umbre was training in public, so we know what he did. Everybody else was training in public. Mike Manser never did. His excuse was he couldn't focus, all right? So if you want to buy that story, fine. I'm not, nothing to do with it. But you have to understand that very, very few people, if I, if I say nobody gained results training like Mike Menzer, I've tried that, didn't work. Uh, dozens of, of extremely successful bodybuilders in London, in, in muscle work, especially famous muscle works, Tried the same thing. It didn't happen to anybody. Now people say, what about Dorian Yates? Yeah, Dorian Yates tried something similar, but he took the principles out and he adapted to his training method, which was never one muscle per exercise. It was always 16 to 20 sets per exercise. One uh, set per exercise. 60 to 20 sets. He would do like three, four, even five sets per exercise, calling the last one the real one. Everybody can say that. But it's not one set per exercise. It's not four movements for chest, one set each, four sets all together. No, it was more than that. It was always three to four sets. He was building up pyramid system. A lot of people did that pyramid system in the past. So everybody can say, oh, my last set was the only one that actually I count as the real one. No, every, every set is a set and you're doing it. So it doesn't have to be a last one. He, he would use loads of four reps and negatives, etc. Et we know now that four reps and negatives are not even necessary for maximum mus muscle development. They're not necessary. There is something else more important there. But obviously that, is, is, that subject uh, is not uh, the subject of this video. I don't have time and, and space to talk about it now. But uh, I hope I managed to clarify the differences and explain why was the training method in all days different than the training method uh, today and what were the main reasons for that. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please uh, subscribe to my channel. And I uh, will see you in the next video in which I will be talking about uh, diet in 70s and 80s, actually old school diet. Until then, um, take care of yourself and see you soon.